So you want to learn how I made the visuals off my Frank Jeff C. Volume 2 visual experience. Well, you clicked on the right video. For this video, I shall be using the track Aesthetic Fashion, and it sounds a little something like this. You could also check out this version that Unreality Journeys created. It's actually really cool. I'll link it down below. You can, of course, download this FLP, which is in also the links in the below, so you can mess around with it. So let's get to making them visuals. So first you open up the mixer, and here are all the individual, you know, stems. But let's go on to the master channel, where we're going to insert Z game video vi- oh, fuck. We're going to insert Z game editor visualizer. And it looks something like this, it's kind of weird. But I'm using the first version. There's like multiple versions of this available now. Most uh, YouTubers use Visualizer 2, which I'll get in the future. But right now, let's start off with the settings. So you can connect this to a MIDI port, but that's complicated. Anti-alias is it gets rid of the show alias. Depending on what type of computer you have, I have low, so I have it set to low. Stereographic, stereoscopic makes it 3D. Uh, preloaded effects, all this other stuff. Spectrograph, I like to have it up at the maximum because I like high definition stuff. This is where you can type in text like subscribe to Frank Jeff C on YouTube. And then bitmap is where you add uh, pictures and you could just add custom stuff. So let's add this deal with it. It's deal with it sunglasses. And now we have deal with it as a bitmap. I'll show you what other bitmaps do later. Then you have meshes. Let's add another mesh. Uh, mesh is a 3DS file and I don't have any 3DSs because I've never got the 3DS. Video cue point is where you select your video cues, but we don't need that right now. And then videos, you can add videos. It supports uh, WMV, which is a Windows movie, whatever. Um, I don't have any WMV, so you're going to need to convert some videos into WMV if you want to use videos in your visualizer. And then you can sync it to the song position, so you press this button and it'll play from the beginning where the thing is. You can even add a camera. See if I could add my webcam, see what happens. I added a webcam, so let's see how it works. And then debug is where you write stuff like, this program doesn't work good. And that's where you write that stuff. So now let's go back to the main. So we have these uh, three things, clear, background, foreground. Clear is an effect that affects the background and foreground. Background and foreground are their own little things. So background is the what's in the back. Foreground is what's in the front. You can rotate this. You can zoom in and zoom out. This freezes it. This is what attaches or detaches the window. I usually like detached so I can like go around and stuff, but let's try attached and it combines them, but it kind of looks ugly. And then you can also set it as wallpaper. So when you close this background, um, it's in the back as the whole thing, but it's kind of glitchy I find. So I just have it as detached for now. And then the frame rate, 30 frames per second for noobs, 60 frames per second for, I don't know, people that like really fast stuff. And the aspect ratio is 4.3, but what is this, 2001? So use 16.9. And I like making it super small so that it doesn't, you know, take up too much processing speed or wham. So let's, let's choose one of these things. So let's clear this, let's clear that, and let's choose a background. So if we choose like one of these random things, um, there's over 56 different uh, effects you could use so you can like scroll through all of them and you can see how it looks that's a lot of different uh, combinations so experiment with all of these let's go to video wall and it says integrated webcam so you can see that my webcam feed it looks like it really isn't taking my webcam so but that's how videos would look like through there oh it's all rotated all awkward so let's let's set that back to the beginning type in zero there set at the beginning. And then you can see here the text that says, subscribe to Frank Jeff CEO. With sidechain, you can select sidechain. So let's do the deep house uh, synth and let's look for it. So here's the deep house synth and I have it sidechained to the background. So now let's choose one of these. Let's see, diamond bit, no, full of stars. This one, it kind of moves to it. Fog machine, this one. So not all the effects actually go to the music. You have to find effects that move to it. Like this one moves to the, to the sound. I like this one a lot. 
That's when you can see like it's really effective to the synth. This is me hacking into the mainframe. I like this one, Dark Spark. It, it goes to it just enough and I can teach you guys how, how it works. So alpha is what controls the, the transparency of the layer. So less alpha means it's more see-through, more alpha means it's like on the background. Hue and saturation are linked. So if you put saturation all the way up and then move the hue, it changes colors. So what I like doing is through the song, I right click and create an automation clip then go to my playlist and you can see the automation clip that was created in here and I like moving it like like this so that as the song progresses it changes colors and goes all the way through all the color spectrum so watch as we play it it'll change color let me move it up a bit So yeah, you can see that moving and changing colors with the song. So now let's choose the next thing for the background. We have lightness, where if you put it up, it gets light. If you put it down, it turns dark. Size, you can make it small, or you can make it big. Let me just uh, mute the vocals because they kind of take up the frequency range of my voice, so like you could hear me better. And then this uh, position moves it left and right, the x-axis, which if you learned in school is left and right. If I want to reset, I usually right click and then I select reset parameter. This is up and down, the y-axis. So if I want to reset it, I click and reset. Now this controls how far it, uh, left and right it goes. If it's small, it'll be in the center. If it's big, it's wide. I kind of like it in the center though. This controls uh, up and down. I kind of like it when it's in the center. And then color wandering is like how much color shifts from the saturation and the hue. So like with this, you can see it'll still move. Um, let's see, fuzz level is I think white noise. So given gives it that like, that old like grimy look. Sensitivity is how strong it needs to be for the effect to light up. So I kind of want it to be like kind of I don't know, not too strong. And now let's create a foreground. So I told you my favorite foreground thing is pentaskeleton. And let's not deal with it and take off the video. Let's sidechain it to the kick. So when the kick hits, it moves. Yeah. And uh, let's put the saturation down a little bit. Let's link this hue to that hue. So put the saturation up right click this and then link to controller and then when you link to controller you can link to all the automation clips and the last automation clip I made was this one so that's what links to that color press link make sure to unclick remove conflict so it's like not highlighted and then they follow each other now so these colors will follow each other throughout the song so like one automation clip <clears throat> And now the next part, which is fun, is the this clear part controls the effects on both of them. So let's get rid of the bitmap and the video. And let's scroll through some of these effects. So look at this one. You have kaleidoscopes. You have blur. You have boxed in. Fractally. Phantasmic. Sky Nightmare. Wormhole. I like this one. It's like you're going through time and space. Solid color, retro degrade. This makes everything look like it's like going through like a lo-fi filter. Fading, wormhole, darken, warp back, blooming, pixelation, feed space. I like vig vignette because that makes draws your eye to the center. But I think for this one, I will use one one of these, something like that. And then this. This controls the movement of the fractals. This is how wide the fractals are. Uh, I, I, I like three. Three is a good number. Feedback is like how much feedback there is. Let's see. Movement shows it moving forward and backwards, but that could get kind of dizzying, so I'm gonna reset that. Now I wanna show you guys a, a cool trick I learned. So what you gotta do is 
I feel like most kicks are really popular in uh, telling people when to move. So what I'm gonna do is on this, find where the kick is and here's the kick. And I'm gonna create a peak controller, which is a cool way to uh, follow peaks and movement in sound. So select peak controller and then deselect mute so it's not muted. And each time it peaks, it'll cause a movement of automation. So now let's go back to uh, the game editor. I don't know why it's called game editor. Uh, there's all their tutorials, there's a new one out, but I'll look into it. See, feedback might be pretty cool too. Add a peak too. So then uh, link to controller, select link, and then select uh, the peak controller on the kick to this, and then press okay. And now each time there's a kick, it'll move. It'll, it follows the actual peak and sound of the kick. So when we have it all together, and let's see, the kick comes in right around here, like without the kick, and then the kick comes in. And there's more movement to the music. You can see it move like way better. So yeah, I'm gonna give you guys this project with uh, the visualizer so you can like see it and mess with it. And I might as well create a, a thing. I'll call this, what should I call it? Save the preset as. I'll call this one Aesthetic Fashion. Those other presets are presets I made for the volume two stuff. So that's where they're kind of there. Okay, save. And now you want to render this. So what you got to do is go to settings and then export to video. And then you got to name it Aesthetic Fashion. <laughs> And then you select a preset. The custom one is like, it has all these things. Um, some of these aren't really that great. So YouTube uh, 1080 is pretty standard and you get all these stuff. I would increase the bit rate to 60, frames to 60, keyframes to 60, because it just follows the seconds better. If you press uncompressed, it'll make it like as huge as possible. Um, normally I was choosing advanced profile, I think. And then for audio, I was choosing this one, I think. Or this one, you can you could just mess around with it. Um, try to stay within the 44 kilohertz because that one's like the one everyone uses. Maybe this one, and then you press. Also, heads up, uh, when you click browse, you have to select a folder and then save it to something, or else it's not going to show up. So you you better select a folder and save it and name it something and then press OK, and then that's how you do it. Okay, and then press start, and it should render like a normal thing but instead of rendering as a normal song it's actually rendering as a video so it takes some time but after it's done rendering well we'll have a video so yeah thanks for watching this little tutorial i made on how i made the visuals after the video is rendered it'll be rendered as a windows movie a video file and then you can pop that into any of your editors that you use or any programs you use to uh, manipulate footage and you could, uh, you know, upload it everywhere. So that's how I made the visuals for volume two. So yeah, uh, check out the links in the download below and stuff like that. And also if you made it this far, comment on my latest uh, pictures. Frank, you're overrated. Uh, thank you. Bye.